بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه ونثني عليه الخير كله ونصلي ونسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيد الأولين والآخرين وإمام الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Dear respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is uh, an honor for me to be with you here just a few days before the month of Ramadan. Um, although it is a very uh, sad occasion for me uh, to speak in uh, this particular time after witnessing what happened to uh, our brothers and sisters in Egypt and what is happening in Egypt. However, this is life and uh, we ask Allah Jalla uh, to make uh, good out of what is happening there and we have our confidence in Allah Jalla and thiqah in Allah Jalla that Allah Jalla will choose the best for our Ummah. We just need to put our trust in Him. Uh, uh, today, today's topic is returning to uh, worshipping Allah Jalla as you know, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that it is the Rahmah of Allah that He revealed different types of worship. Why is this? All of us know, uh, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created jinn and ins except for one purpose, which is to worship me. Also Allah Jalla says in Surah لم يكن الذين كفروا البينة وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء They were not commanded except to worship Allah Jalla وعلاه alone with full sincerity and you know that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم dedicated his life for worshiping Allah Jalla وعلاه and in fact, Ibrahim alayhi salam in his dua, he said, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ Allah jalla wa'ala commanded him to say, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَاءِ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا Whether this is to Ibrahim or to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ صَلَاتِ My salah, my nusuk, my sacrifice, my life, my death, all of it are for Allah jalla wa'ala. All of it are for Allah jalla wa'ala. So, if all of my life is going to be for Allah Jalla wa'ala, how come we do other activities in our life other than ibadah? We get married, we buy and sell, we go and travel, we have some fun, we spend some time with our families and so on. How come Allah Jalla wa'ala wanted us to be dedicated for ibadah? He created us for ibadah, for nothing but to worship Him. He wanted us to worship him day and night and night the prophets said that my salah my sacrifice my life my death all of it are for allah Jalla how come this means that for a muslim all of his life can be easily a ibadah and moreover to understand that ibadah is just the listed type of ibadah those listed ibadat, which include uh, fasting, which include prayer, which include dhikr of Allah Jalla wa'ala, this understanding is a wrong understanding. Ibadah is more comprehensive than those types of ibadat. In fact, the conclusion is the ibadah is of two types. We can classify ibadah into two types. One general meaning of ibadah or general ibadah, which is the life, if it is devoted for Allah Jalla wa'ala, if it is done for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala, if anything is done for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala, including having sexual relationship, including having fun with your children, including having fun with others, this is ibadah, generally speaking. Now, the other type of ibadah is a listed ibadah. What is the listed ibadah? Is those ibadat that the sharia or those acts that sharia commanded us to do them according to certain qualities certain time certain quality 
certain number uh, and uh, with certain conditions. So those ibadah, those acts that were heavily regulated by Sharia, ah, they are considered to be the listed ibadat. Okay? And the rest of our human activities or the rest of the human activities, such as the examples that we have given, having sexual relationship, uh, buying and selling, trading, having fun with your children, establishing countries, uh, building societies, being involved in politics, being involved in other social activities. All of these things are ibadat. The Sharia ah did not heavily regulate them. The Sharia ah put certain framework. Once we follow that framework, then we are within the boundaries of Sharia. Ah and we can transfer those activities to be and to make them activities of ibadat if we have the right intention behind them. However, the listed ibadat, as we said, the Sharia ah regulated them heavily. And to the fact that, the, as the scholars say, al asl fi al ibadat al hadar that those listed ibadat, you cannot alter them, you cannot change them, you cannot delay them, you cannot bring them forward. You have to do them as they were regulated by Sharia. Ah. While the first type of ibadat, you have freedom and flexibility to do them as, as you want within the general or wide framework of Sharia. Now, we see that Islam puts a lot of attention to the listed ibadat. Okay? Put a lot of attention to the listed ibadat. The listed ibadat include uh, uh, salah, first of all, the arkan al Islam, al khamsa, uh, salah, fasting, or salah, zakah, fasting, hajj, and the kru of Allah jalla wa ala mainly. And all listed ibadat go around those five pillars of al Islam. So, Sharia put so much attention to those listed ibadat. The question is why? Why Sharia put so much attention to those ibadat? And when they talk about righteous people, they always talk about uh, those scholars or those people who used to do a lot of those ibadat. You rarely find a righteous person who was known as a righteous person in Islamic history or one of the great leaders of Islam or one of the great scholars of Islam who used to do little of the listed ibadat. He might do a little bit of salah, but he used to do a lot of fasting. He might do a little bit of fasting, but he used to do a lot of dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala, a lot of hajj, and so on. Harun al-Rashid, he was one of the caliphs. They said that he performed more than 50 hajj. Uh, salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, he was a commander, a leader of the Muslim uh, ummah one of the icons of the Muslim Ummah. And he was, uh, uh, you can say, uh, a leader in, in, in wars and in battles. He was not a scholar, yet they mentioned a lot about his sadaqah, his dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala. He used to do a lot of fasting. He was so keen. One of the key qualities I, I read recently about him is he used to be very keen to pray in jama'ah. Okay, and so on. Let alone, I'm not talking about the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum or the second generation or the third generation. So why did they use to put a lot of attention to those listed ibadat? Why didn't they say, for example, that yes, because we have two types of ibadat, salah, fasting, and zakah, the listed ibadat, and we have the other unregulated ibadat or non-regulated ibadat, why don't we focus on those ibadat? So we do a lot of business for the sake of Allah Jalla Ala. We become involved in political, uh, in political process for the sake of Allah Jalla Ala. We become social activists for the sake of Allah Jalla Ala, and they don't put attention to the listed ibadat. Why we don't see among as Salaf al-Salih radiallahu ta'ala anhum something like this? 
Why don't we see among the greatest scholars of Islam something like this? Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, as you know, that he was, uh, uh, Sufyan al Thawri considered him as the fifth rightly guided Khalifa. He was one of the great leaders of Al Islam, and they considered him the first reformer of Al Islam in history because he died 101. So, this Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he was caliph, he was in charge of the whole ummah of a big, one of the biggest Islamic states ever known in history during the Umayyad period. They mentioned that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz used to do a lot of Qiyam al-Layl, he used to do a lot of Sadaqah, he used to uh, do a lot of fasting and so on. They mentioned this a lot about him. Why couldn't he say that, oh, I am in charge of the Muslim Ummah, it is sufficient for me to look after the Muslim Ummah and not to put attention to those Ibadat. In fact, those Ibadat may hinder me in taking care of the Ummah. Why is this? If we go to the Prophet وسلم, himself, I'm going reverse. Yeah, we took Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, Umar Abdul Aziz, take the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, was the leader or a leader. He was a leader, uh, he was a leading person in political involvement, in social reform. The Prophet وسلم, he was the best husband. The Prophet وسلم, was a father. The Prophet وسلم, he was himself a father-in-law. The Prophet وسلم, used to be everything for the Muslim community at that time, for the Muslim Ummah at that time. Beside, he was the leader of the battles. Himself led at least uh, 17 battles or 16 battles, at least minimum. So, if uh, ha, th this is the life of the Prophet وسلم, yet the Prophet وسلم, as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, that he used to fast until we say he will never stop fasting. And as uh, a group of Tabi'een, Masruq and other came to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and told her, let us tell us about something amazing that you witnessed. Uh, you witnessed from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She said all of, her, all of his matters were amazing. All his matters were amazing. And she said one time he went to bed uh, next to me. Then he said, oh Aisha, let me worship my Lord. And then he stood up and then he started to, uh, he made wudu and then he started to pray. He started to read Surah Al-Baqarah and he started to cry until his tears were falling on his beard, on his uh, sheikh, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So, how come the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was so busy in doing many other activities, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, or those activities did not hinder or stop the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam from doing a lot of ibadah, a lot of this listed ibadah, number of reasons. First of all, those ibadat those ibadat are needed for us as a fuel or as an activation method to activate us to do the other ibadat. So if the person's relationship with Allah Jalla is weak, this person, he will not be involved in political activism or social activism for the sake of Allah Jalla he will not be that person. Even if he becomes a Muslim politician or a social reformer, he will be do it for, for his own agenda, not for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Why? Because his attachment to Allah Jalla wa'ala is so weak. Even if he were to do these activities for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala, because he was not that strong in terms of the relationship with Allah Jalla wa ala. He will leave those activities very, very quickly. He might be active for some time and then after some time he will leave them. If someone were to ask me for the proof for this, look, in the beginning of Al-Islam, Allah Jalla wa ala commanded the believers to establish what? To establish Qiyam al-Layl. Huh? 
generally speaking it was obligatory upon them and Allah Jalla wa'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya ayuhal muzzammil qubil layla illa qalila nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila aw zid alayhi wa ratti lil qur'an tartila This verse or these verses were among the very few verses that were revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam in the beginning of the da'wah Now please think about it my dear respected brothers and sisters Qumil layla illa qalila yeah, stand for prayer all of the night or most of it illa qalila, most of it now, will the Prophet Sallallahu stand to pray at night uh, if he wants to pray at night for five hours or something like this, he needs to recite Quran for five hours think about it, has there been any revealed Quran enough to be recited for five hours Is the question clear? Yeah? There was not enough Quran revealed because Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammil among the very few surahs were revealed in the beginning of Al Islam. So, how come Allah Jalla wa ala commanded the Prophet to stand for prayer for the whole night or most of the night? And then Allah Jalla wa ala says in the end of the surah, to the believers in Rabbaka Yalamu and Nakatakumu Adina in Sulutay Layli on Isfa, who was Sulutau, Wataifatum Minaladina Ma, Wallah Yukadiru Layla and Naha. So the believers they were establishing Qiyamul Layl along with you. So when they were establishing Qiyamul Layl, how they were reading in Qiyamul Layl? It means very few surahs of the Quran, very few verses of the Quran, if the person read them, repeat them contemplate on them, this will be enough for Qiyamul Layl. Which means that, the, first of all, Qiyamul Layl, Qiyamul Layl, as Allah Jalla wa Ala says in Surah, uh, in Surah Al-Muzzammil, إِنَّ نَاشِئَةَ اللَّيْلِ هِيَ أَشَدُّ وَطْعًا وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا Indeed, Qiyam, establishing Qiyam, either in the beginning of the night or at the end of the night based on the tafsir what is it? it is more difficult yet it helps you to establish yourself on the right path and what? helps you to carry the responsibilities of the da'wah the future responsibilities which means that those ibadat those ibadat are essential, are important for any person who wants to be politically active for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala, socially active for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala, he wants to have business for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala. So if you see a person who is saying that he wants to be politically active for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala, he wants to be a reformer, he wants to be active in non-listed ibadat, the first advice that should be given to him is what you need to strengthen your relationship with Allah Jalla wa ala because that relationship, that strong relationship with Allah Jalla wa ala enables you first of all to establish ikhlas, sincerity for what you do and secondly to uh, remain firm on what you use to, what you want to do on political activism, social activism, and so on. So these are two important points. Why we need those ibadat, uh, the listed ibadat, as I said. Another point why we need those ibadat is the fact that many people, my dear respected brothers and sisters, think that salah or fasting or qiyamul layl may hinder you or take some of your time and you will not have enough time to be socially active or politically active yeah is it clear and the answer for this look at the life of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam as we said the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led at least in hadith zayd ibn arqam the Prophet وسلم, he was asked, Zayd ibn Arqam, how many battles you joined with the Prophet وسلم, he said 16 or 17. So some scholars said the minimum number of battles 16 or 17, uh, some other scholars said 19, some other scholars said up to 25. 
okay? Which means in, in Madani period, where the Prophet ﷺ remained 10 years in Medina, on average he was leading two battles a year, which is a lot. At that time, there were not many equipment, they were traveling on foot, uh, they were, there was uh, poverty, and they don't have those facilities to lead to battles every year, that is quite a lot. Yet the Prophet said, as we said, was the best husband. The Prophet was the most social active person. The Prophet was the political leader. The Prophet was everything, and yet he used to fast a lot. He used to do Qiyam al-Layl a lot. He used to give Sadaqa a lot. He used to make Istighfar a lot. The Prophet said, used to say that I make Istighfar uh, 70 times. I make Tawbah 70 times or 100 times. How come the Prophet ﷺ managed to do these, all of these things? There is a secret here, okay? That those ibadat, my dear respected brothers and sisters, help the person to achieve a lot in his normal life. So don't think that fasting will hinder you from other activities. Don't think that Qiyamul Layl will hinder you from other activities. Don't think that giving sadaqah will uh, take part of your money and the money, yeah, you will not have uh, enough money to be, uh, to use it for some uh, social activities, to use it for some political activities and so on. Don't think that. In fact, those ibadat give you more barakah in your time. Those ibadat give you more barakah in your money and those ibadat will enable you to do to be more active whether socially politically and you name it take the example of sadaqa the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said ma naqasa malun min sadaqa sadaqa will never decrease your wealth but technically or physically yeah if you if you have 100 pounds you give 20 pounds as a sadaqa definitely you will have 80 pounds yeah when you take 20 pounds sadaqa out of 100, it will not be 120, it will be 80. No one will doubt this. Agree? So how come the Prophet says, مَا نَقَصَ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٌ Sadaqa will never decrease your wealth. How come? It means that there is a secret, there is something hidden beyond the tangible physical life that we are living, which is, some, of course, as you know, that some du'at say, oh, if you give sadaqah maybe 20 pounds, Allah Jalla wa ala will save you from a calamity that may uh, cost you thousands of pounds. Yeah? As I heard one of du'at said that when you give sadaqah, you think that your money decreased, but you don't know. Maybe you will be traveling and then maybe you will cross the traffic signal, you will be fined 200 pounds. So the 20 pounds of sadaqah, saved you from a fine of 200 pounds or maybe you park your car wrongly and you receive a fine of 50 uh, 50 pounds or 80 pounds in, in in london so the 20 pounds or the 10 pounds of sadaqa saved you from this so in fact the 20 pounds of sadaqa have increased your wealth maybe allah alam, maybe that is true but we have a trust in allah Jalla ala, that those ibadat will help us to what to do to be more active now fasting for example my dear respected brothers and sisters definitely we are going to fast long days yeah i don't want to get into the, this discussion when does fajr start yeah will fajr start at 1 30 or uh, a few minutes after one o'clock or at three o'clock whether this or this is still fajr will uh, maghrib will be too late uh, 9.30 or maybe 10 o'clock in some areas here in, in Britain, around 10 o'clock. So definitely it is a very long fast. In Oslo, the brothers, they will be fasting around 21 hours. Yeah, and little bit a city uh, above Oslo in Norway, they will be fasting around uh, 22 hours. Okay, so no one will say that this is, uh, this is an easy fast. Yeah, this is a difficult fast. No, no, uh, no doubt about it. Now, how come this fast will enable you to be more active? Okay, 
how come this type of ibadah will make you more active politically, socially, economically, and others. And as one of the uh, ex-Arab leaders, he said, because fasting in summer will, uh, will reduce the, uh, the, the GDP, yeah? so we, we need to move it to winter all of the time in order to what? Because Islam aims for uh, a better welfare system and the GDP of Muslim countries have to be always uh, high. So we need to move fasting uh, into winter where we have uh, short days and, and uh, better weather. And subhanallah, see, the key thing, first of all, as we said, the more your connection is uh, the more strong connection you have with Allah Jalla Ala, the more you will be dedicated to do more activities. Okay, this is one thing. The other thing, there might be a secret. Who says maybe when you fast for three thirty days, it is proven that it is a very very healthy practice. So this fast will help you and will save you from so many illnesses and diseases and instead of losing much of your time in having uh, rest out of uh, uh, for certain diseases or having medicine or having operations this fast have saved that time have saved more than the time that would have been lost if you did not fast maybe this is one thing the other thing is my dear respected brothers and sisters which i strongly believe in as the chinese saying said if you want your job to be done give it to what huh? a, busy a busy person yeah if you want a job to be done give it to what a busy person or to a person who has free time logically speaking you should give it to a person who has what free time yes not to a busy person why do you give it to a busy person how come if you want your job to be done give it to a busy person ah uh, yeah check it wallahi brothers okay check it yourself you will see that the busy people they are busy because they do many activities okay and they can manage to do more and more because they have more ability physically they are more active they can manage their time more effectively and efficiently okay and because they have learned to do things they can do them quickly but the free people the free people they are lazy they cannot manage themselves they struggle with a small job that's why uh, they fail in so many jobs and that's why they are free okay not because they are successful no because they are lazy people they are failing people so they don't have many activities in their hands similarly as i always say if you want to go to a good restaurant yeah go to what uh, a busy restaurant don't go to a free restaurant why because a free restaurant, if it is really good restaurant, many people will go. But if it is a free restaurant, it means what? People are not going because either it is so expensive, unproportionally, or the food is not good. Yeah? Even if the food is good, because it is not that busy, it will be, uh, it will be left over or the food, they have to keep it in the fridge for one or two days. But the busy, the, the busy restaurant, the people are, there are active, the food is not uh, stored for a long time, and they can serve you very, very quickly. The same principle applies. So if you are busy in your ibadah, you will be active in other activities. That's why if you look at Sharia, we see that it is amazing to see that Sharia wanted us to dedicate more time for listed ibadat in certain occasions. So for in Ramadan, for example, which is the blessed month that is coming to us. Subhanallah. We know that fasting will stop us from what? Of many other activities. We know that Qiyamul Layl will what? 
will make us sleep little. Agree? So it will take some of our rest. So we will not be able to do many other activities. But as I have explained, because of the indirect consequences of fasting and Qiyamul Layl and others, this Ramadan will be an opportunity for us to recharge our batteries to be more active for the whole year. That's why Sharia put certain emphasis or put emphasis on certain listed ibadat that have to be performed during certain uh, times of the year. So Ramadan is a very golden opportunity for the person to leave all the non-regulated ibadat and to focus on what? The regulated or the listed ibadat because the more he is dedicated for those listed and regulated ibadat during the month of Ramadan, the more he will be active for the non-regulated ibadat outside the month of Ramadan. And that's why we see that uh, the, among the righteous people, among the righteous people, the great leaders of Al-Islam, they used to avoid doing many other activities during the month of Ramadan, yeah? And they used to dedicate more time either for i'tikaf, such as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to make i'tikaf the last 10 days of Ramadan. They used to do a lot of ibadah. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, as you know, he used to uh, stop teaching, although he used to teach hadith. He used to stop teaching hadith, and he used to say that this, Ram this month is a month of ibadah. We need to read more Quran. He used to finish Quran 60 times, 60 times during the month of Ramadan. And Sheikh Firaz will, inshallah, elaborate on yani, the recitation of Quran during the month of Ramadan. I have seen that uh, also Ibrahim al nakhai Imam Abu Hanifa, and many others used to finish the Quran, complete the Quran 60 times during the month of Ramadan, let alone Qira'at al-Quran, let alone doing i'tikaf. Why? Because it is a time, it is a time to use it, utilize it for the regulated ibadat, that may first of all increase your status in Jannah inshallah and help you to do more activities outside the month of Ramadan. So uh, my dear respected brothers and sisters during the month of Ramadan we can do many ibadat and in the, in, in the second uh, lecture inshallah we will talk about how to prepare for the month of Ramadan but during the month of Ramadan, first of all, Allah Jalla wa Ala gathered together in this month number of ibadat. And that's why the month of Ramadan in terms of months is the best month among the whole year. It is the best month as a month, as a complete month. It is the best month uh, for the whole year. And as it is the best month, Allah Jalla wa Ala gathered in this month fasting Allah Jalla wa put in this month the Qiyamul Layl that is encouraged more than other, more than Qiyamul Layl in other, in other nights. Allah Jalla wa Ala revealed the Quran in this month. And in fact, there is a hadith, Hadith Wathil ibn al Asqa' that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the, uh, the scripture of Ibrahim, of Ibrahim were revealed in the month of Ramadan. The Torah of Musa was revealed in the month of Ramadan. The Injil of Isa was revealed in the month of Ramadan. The Zabur of Dawood was revealed in the month of Ramadan. And of course, the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. Also, uh, in the month of Ramadan, Allah Jalla wa Ala uh, Allah Jalla wa Ala encouraged us to do a lot of dua and if you read the verses that uh, talk about Siyam in Surah Al-Baqarah in the beginning Allah Jalla wa Ala says Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'alakum tattaqun or who you believe fast was prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon previous nations so you may attain taqwa then Allah Jalla wa Ala spoke about Ramadan uh, Quran Shaykh Firaz as we said will elaborate on this شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. Then Allah جل وعلا spoke about what, huh? 
وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان then after that الله جل وعلا spoke about what ها اعتكاف أحل لكم ليلة الصيام الرفث إلى نسائكم هن لباس لكم وأنتم لباس لهن then الله جل وعلا says ولا تباشروهن وأنتم عاكفون في المساجد تلك حدود الله يا yeah? Don't come closer to them while you are observing i'tikaf. So Allah Jalla wa Ala indicated that in the month of Ramadan, it is fasting. We do fasting. We do qiyam. Uh, we do uh, the recitation of the Quran. We do what also? We do a lot of du'a and we do i'tikaf. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam also mentioned what? Mentioned qiyam al-layl. من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتساب غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه وما ومن قام ليلة ومن قام رمضان إيمانا واحتساب غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. so establishing قيام الليل and the prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم also encouraged us to do a lot of صدقة during the month of Ramadan. inshallah we will elaborate on this in the second lecture when we talk about um, how to prepare for uh, Ramadan or preparation for Ramadan. The point, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is that Allah Jalla wa Ala gave us certain opportunities that we need to utilize and consider them as treasures. If we lose them, we lose, we are going to lose a lot. Among those unique opportunities is the month of Ramadan. And that's why some scholars said that had the people known the reward that Allah Jalla has given us in the month of Ramadan or has or will reward us for any ibadah during the month of Ramadan, we would wish if the whole year is what is the month of Ramadan. And Ya'la, one of the tabi'in said, Kanu, they used to ask Allah Jalla six months before the month of Ramadan to what? That Allah Jalla wa Ala keep them alive until they fast the whole month of Ramadan. And they used to ask Allah Jalla wa Ala six months after the month of Ramadan to what? <coughs> to accept it from them. That's why also, you know, in Hadith Muslim, the Imam Ahmad, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam was descending from the uh, pulpit, from the member, and he said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. The companion said, Ya Rasulullah, we have heard you saying something strange. What is it? Uh, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. What is it? He said, Jibreel came to me and he said, Muhammad, say Ameen. I said, Ameen. Say Ameen. I said, Ameen. Say Ameen. I said, Ameen. So Ameen for what? Ameen means, Oh Allah accepted or Oh Allah, al or Allah has accepted it. What is it? One of them is Man adraka Ramadan wa lam yughfar lahu The one who fasts the month of Ramadan or he lives during the month of Ramadan yet the month of Ramadan lives without him getting all his sins forgiven all his sins wiped out This person has been what? Bu'dan lahu as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as Jibreel said and as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ameen Bu'dan lahu means he had been kept away from the mercy of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Why? Because in the other hadith, hadith Abi Huraira as well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam said that Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Kullu amal ibn Adam lahu illa sawm fa innahu li wa ana ajzibihi. All actions of the son of Adam belong to him except for fasting and I reward for it. Then in the hadith, uh, Allah Jalla wa Ala says وَفِيهِ لَيْلَ مَنْ حُرِمَهَا حُرِمَ الْخَيْرَ كُلَّ and in it or in during the month of Ramadan there is a night anyone who was deprived the virtues or the bounties of that night he has been really deprived subhanallah one night because it means that this person if he did not get the maximum of this month if he did not get the maximum of this particular night when is he going to be active and that's why my dear respected brothers and sisters i urge you i urge myself 
and all of you to consider this as an opportunity for us to get the maximum and to consider it as they say the uh, business season or the business best time for trading the business people will not use will not lose that opportunity will work harder and harder and you know business people during certain seasons or during certain times they don't even sleep they just even they sleep a lot before in order to be ready for that season so this is what is what we are going to witness and that's why we really need to consider it from take it from that perspective that angle and in order to uh, and take every single minute of this blessed occasion as a treasure and if we can't leave if we can't feel, waste every single minute every single second then we should do so i ask allah jalla wa ala to make us among those who fast the month of ramadan and make the maximum of it and they may make the maximum of the ibadah inshallah um, you know we have another lecture that talks about the planning for the month of ramadan yes yeah inshallah we will uh, talk about more how to plan for a month of ramadan and what kind of other or what kind of activities that can be done in 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 more details barakallahu lakum wa jazakum allah khaira sallallahu sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah let me start by the following you know one of my favorite subjects is to talk about setting a vision i recorded a, a tv program in fact twice about it and the more i talk about it the more i develop new ideas about it setting a vision and um i gave a few lectures about it uh, as well recently when i was preparing the lecture uh, no, no, not in fact the last lecture the pre le lecture before i asked the brothers and the sisters one question i told them um, all of us know the reward of dhikr of Allah remembrance of Allah yeah remembrance of Allah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for example said la ana aqula subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah allah akbar to say subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah allah akbar is better than the whole world the whole world what does it mean it means those areas no 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 the whole of the UK, including uh, Buckingham Palace, including uh, those big palaces that belong to some of the Gulf people, they say 120 rooms in one big palace, and oh, oh no, including the palaces of the kings in, in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in Emirates, including the palaces of uh, Brunei Sultan, they said in his palace there is 1,000 rooms. Yeah. Just subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar is better than everything, everything in this world. So, just by common sense, why don't we keep saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Akbar, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar. The tongue should not keep quiet. We should keep saying it because whenever, whenever we say subhanallah, something given to us granted to us than the best palace in this life are you imagining the situation okay the prophet ﷺ said man salla alayya marratan wahida sallallahu alayhi biha ashara allahumma salli wa sallim ala rasulillah if you send salah upon salutation upon upon the prophet sallallahu one time allah will send salah upon you 10 times sending salah upon you one time is to means that allah jalla mentions you among the angels among the best people among the best of creation so by just mentioning the salah upon the prophet sallallahu one time allah jalla will mentions you 
among the angels ten times. How long it takes to say Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Rasulillah? Not even five seconds. Agree? And same thing, we can talk about different virtues, different virtues. Uh, okay, another style of doing the, uh, good deeds. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hadith Ibn Umar said, the best of deeds is to make a Muslim happy. Yeah? طبعاً, this to make a Muslim happy by doing a big favor for him and even a small favor. Sometimes you bring, uh, you notice that oh, your brother wants to drink some water. Yeah? You give him some water. طيب, this you make him happy. صح? How long it took from you? Nothing. What effort? Nothing. I, uh, I wanted to launch a program during Ramadan. Maybe you can cut it and because it was not yet launched, this Egypt problem came, which is to, uh, to have uh, uh, some brothers, okay, walking in the public transportation or maybe in some roads, busy roads with some dates during iftar time to offer it for Muslims. Because I experienced it myself. Sometimes you are in London, we use uh, trains, yeah, public transportation a lot. So sometimes you want to break your fast, you, maybe you have nothing with you. And if there is a cup of water, that will be really great blessing. Or if you have one piece of date, you can offer it to someone, yeah, you get a, a similar reward. I remember a brother, and I learned it from him. We were traveling by a plane. And for whatever, whatever reason, uh, this is uh, two, two years ago, and uh, I don't know, I did not have dates. He brought good amount of dates with him. He was ready for it. And when Ramadan, when the, we, uh, the time to break our fast came, MashaAllah, he provided dates for everyone in the plane, almost everyone. I said, I became jealous. SubhanAllah, how much reward he will be getting? Something is small. Now, the key thing is, and we can talk about many examples. The key thing is, why don't we do these things? Yeah? Why don't we do a lot of dhikr? Why don't we help? people a lot why don't we uh, think out of the box regarding uh, possible venues of getting the reward of Allah Jalla wa ala, and so on why I found that there are a number of reasons for that one of them is we do not set a high goal or we do not set high goals we do not have ambitious goals or we do not have a vision for life or goals or a goal for our life. Do you agree with me or not? Do you agree with me or not? Yeah? I'll give you an example. I will give you an example. Uh, before this example, Yes, when I gave that lecture, I remember an example, I took it when I was doing management. Uh, they said a factory, tire factory, tire factory, had two shifts. Yeah, one morning shift and one evening shift. They employed a consultant to encourage the productivity of the people of each shift. So he said, I have a very, very simple idea. He charged them a lot for that idea. He said, we need to have a big board and each shift should write how many tires they manage to produce in that shift. Yeah? And we say morning shift and we call them names, whatever. Yeah, let us say morning shift and evening shift. Morning shift managed to produce, let us say, 150 tires. Psychologically, the second shift will try to what? To beat them. Even by one. Yes? Even by one, psychologically. So, they say, oh, 150, let us just do more. Yeah? So they do more. Even by one. 
the second the morning shift comes what this is what they did oh we can show them that we can do more and more and more of course at one point they have to put other incentives but the key point here is you if you do not have a target you will not achieve is it clear do you agree with me or not if you do not have a target in anything you will not achieve okay i will give you a practical example if in the morning in the morning you wake up and in your mind you have certain jobs that you want to achieve today you will manage to achieve them but if you wake up in the morning and you have clean mind nothing in your mind no plans no targets to achieve what will happen by the end of the day yeah when you go to bed you will see what did, you will ask yourself what did i do what did i achieve oh so i could have done this i could have done that i could have done this and that agree or not you will regret and that regret will not be useful at all yes i give you another example a brother told me about uh, uncle one of his uncles he's an elderly person around 70s he heard one time about the virtues of reading quran yes you know in hadith abdullah ibn mas'ud the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man qara'a harfan min kitab allah falahu bihi hasana لا أقول ألف لام ميم حرف ولكن أقول ألف حرف ولام حرف وميم حرف. The one who reads any letter of the book of Allah جل وعلا he will have what one single reward and every reward is multiplied by what by ten. Yes, I don't say ألف لام ميم is one single letter but Alif is one single letter, Lam is another letter, and Mim is another letter. So by reading Alif Lam Mim, you are getting how many Hasana? How many reward? 30. Imagine. Brothers, do you imagine that once you say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim? Just Bismillah Rahman Rahim. How many Hasana you will get? How many? Hundred and ninety. Hundred and ninety. And on the day of resurrection, every single one, including the richest king, will be begging everyone for a single hasana. You know, the richest king in this dunya will be begging, looking for one single hasana. Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مِرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ When the person flee, run away, run away from everyone, from his mother, from his people, from his wife, from his children, he will run away. He doesn't want anything to do with them. They said on the day of Ikrima, the student of Ibn Abbas said, on the day of resurrection, the person will pass by his wife. And he will see his wife. He will, uh, then he will see his son. He will grab his son. He will say to his son, Oh my son, what kind of father I was for you? The son will say to his father, You were the best father for me. You know, as parents, you know, as I always say, our life ends, yeah, to let our children start. Let our life ends when our children start growing. So we will live, we will not live for ourselves when we have children. We live for who? For our children. Everything in our life stops for them. So I sacrifice for them. I don't sleep because of them. I work day and night. I humiliate myself because of them. 
and so on, you name it. On the day of resurrection, I ask my son, my son, I ask him for one single hasana. And he will say, oh, my father, you are the best father. But today I cannot give you a single hasana. Yeah? And in this dunya, just by reciting Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you are getting how many hasana? 190 hasana. By reciting Surah al-Baqarah, yeah? How many letters are there in Surah al- uh, Sorry, in Surah al-Fatiha? How many letters are there in Surah al-Fatiha? 130 something. Yeah? So 1,300 what? Hasana. You will be getting. And if you teach Surah Al-Fatiha to someone, he will be getting 1,300 and you will be getting the same thing. When he prays five times a day, five times time, 130, 1,300 hasana. How much? Imagine. 17 times a day we read what? Surah Al-Fatiha which gives us minimum of around 25,000 hasana a day. And the one who taught someone Surah Al-Fatiha, he will get in his hasanat account 25,000 hasana on a daily basis. Can you imagine this? Now, the question is, why don't we do it? Because no targets we don't have high ambitions we don't have goals this brother he was talking about his uncle when he heard some of the virtues about recitation of the quran he said to himself i am retired 70 around 70s yeah i know the uncle but he didn't tell us this story this his brother his nephew told us about his story yeah, he's retired. He's not doing anything in his life. So he planned to finish the Quran th once every three days. Once every three days. Maybe before he might be uh, just finishing the Quran once every month. Now he wants to finish the Quran once every three days. What happened? He managed to do this. So every day he reads what? Ten juzo. So every day in the morning when he wakes up, he is planning for what? For his day. When to read to ten juzo. And if you look at it for a person who is retired, he can find the time. If he, if there is a will, there is a way. For example, between Fajr and Dhuhr, He's not doing anything. And instead of just sleeping, watching TV from one channel to another channel, or wondering about, or on the phone, or chatting, he is dedicated to finish seven juzu or eight juzu, then another juzu, then another juzu, to finish ten juzu every day. And he managed to do this, and he has been doing this for some time. So, if you do not have targets, believe me, you will not achieve. And this is one of the reasons that I came up with, yeah? That hinder people, that stop people, one of the reasons that stops people from what? From achieving. Otherwise, we know the reward of, as I mentioned, dhikr, salah, siyam, helping others, uh, doing many good activities, we know. But if we do not have a target, we will not do them. And that's why, my dear respected brothers and sisters, especially young people, I always say, don't live without a vision. Don't live without a vision. Believe me, living without a vision makes your life waste. Yes, and if you do not have a vision for your life, you should have goals for certain periods of your life. Goals. Within five years, I want to achieve this. Within one year, I want to achieve this. And you should have at least daily goals. 
daily goals. By the end of this day, I want to achieve this. Or minimum, minimum, my dear respected brothers and sisters, on a monthly basis, you should have certain goals to achieve this month and you should hold yourself accountable for what you have achieved and what you have not achieved. Is it clear? Subhanallah for Ramadan. Try it, ya brothers. Try it. Maybe you will not believe in what I'm saying now. But to try it from now to, and this is the first step for preparing yourself for Ramadan, is to ask yourself, what are my key successful success factors? Yes? Or what are my KPIs? Yeah? How do I evaluate myself during the month of Ramadan? Okay? Uh, what I need some indicators to evaluate my progress during the month of Ramadan. So I have to set some goals for myself. This is the first step for, to prepare yourself for Ramadan. For example, yeah, fasting just by, con by uh, uh, fasting definitely I'm going to fast the whole month. Now, some people think that this is given. You will be fasting for the whole month. To be honest with you, from what I have seen from many people, many of them, because we are going to fast long days, Many of them are not ready to fast the whole month of Ramadan. Some of them, they say, oh, we might be traveling to some other countries. Sometimes they say, what about if I, am, it, if I find it extremely difficult? Uh, some people say we might have exams. Some people might say well, if we are working and so on. So mentally, they are not ready to fast the whole month of Ramadan, they are looking for excuses. And if you are looking for excuses, believe me, you will not be able to do it properly. Yeah? We have a statement in Arabic. Yeah? وَمَنْ, uh, ومن يَسْتَصْعِبْ صُعُودَ الْجِبَالِ يَعِشْ أَبَدَ الدَّهْرِ بَيْنَ الْحُفَرِ the one who finds it difficult to climb mountains, he will live in holes all of his life. Is it clear? Because he will find it difficult to go a little bit up. It's difficult for me. I can't, I can't, I can't. And they say that psychologically, people defeat themselves. And it is not true that they can't, but it is what? a psychological barrier that they can't and because of that psychological barrier they what they themselves demoralize themselves defeat themselves and they accept it to be defeated and they accept to be demoralized deactivated is it clear so the first thing is put a, th a target for this ramadan yeah, fasting, the, I need to fast every day. Long days, yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. I can't do it. Uh, by the way, fasting long, long days, Al Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, commenting on the ayah, Kulu wa shrabu hani and bima aslaftum fil ayyam al khaliya, eat and drink because of what you have done in previous days. He said, on the day of uh, in Jannah, the person will be sitting next to one of his wives of al hur al Ain, And they will be drinking from the Khamar of Al-Jannah. And they will be chatting. And she will say to him, Do you know when I was created and made wife for you? He will say, when? She will tell him, Do you remember that long day? When you fasted for the sake of Allah Jalla wa ala, he said one, she will remind him. He will say, yes, I remember that day. She said, since that day, Allah created me and Allah made me your wife. Allah wed me to you 
and I'm waiting for you since that day. So the person, if he's motivated and he said, I will do it, he can do it. So this is fasting. Also, part of the targets. We said that in the month of Ramadan, we do fasting and we do a recitation of the Quran, a lot of recitation. Okay? Ask yourself how many times you want to finish the Quran or how many times you want to study, how many times you want to finish the Quran, not just reading, reading with understanding, or you can combine between both. So for example, during the month of Ramadan, which is a month of Ibadah, some, many scholars said, put more attention, if you know the basic meanings of the Quran, put more attention to the recitation of the Quran. That's why we see some of the Salaf, like I mentioned Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, others used to complete the Quran, Imam Shafi'i as well, 60 times during the month of Ramadan. Two times every day. Two times every day. And most of the scholars, most of the early scholars used to finish the Quran 30 times. And every day, one time. Every day, one khatma. They complete the Quran once every day. So, this is a target. How many times I need to finish the Quran? If you leave it, Wallahi ya brothers and sisters, if you leave it to be one time, you will hardly be able to do it one time. Do you agree with me or not? But if you put in your mind that you will finish the Quran two times, Believe me, you will be do it. You will be able to do it two times. If you say no, I want to finish it three times. You will be able to do it three times. Uh, last year, we sat with a group of brothers. Yeah. Uh, no, the year before, the year before, with a group of brothers. Yeah, I saw friends and kada from the university, and we said, let us talk about our experience regarding. Uh, Quran, yeah. All of them were from Saudi Arabia, and all of them uh, they used to have yani uh, full time jobs. And they said it depends on how much you set for yourself. One of the brothers said, "I set for myself to finish the Quran, uh, to read ten juz every day." He said, "We used to hear that." Uh, some of the scholars used to finish the Quran 30 times, 60 times. How come? It's difficult. We rarely finish the Quran. We hardly finish the Quran three times. So he said, in a particular Ramadan, in the last 10, day, uh, last 10 days, uh, he took a holiday and he uh, stayed next to Al-Haram. And he said that he had a target to finish Al-Quran yeah, once every three days. So every day to read 10 juzo. He said, let me see if I can manage or not. He said, I managed easily. Easily, I managed to read 10 juzo every day. So if there is a will, there is a way. But you need to what? To set a target for yourself. So this is, again, part of the planning regarding Quran. Regarding Sadaqah, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Believe me, many people uh, come during the month of Ramadan. What sadaqah they give? If there is an announcement about a sadaqah for orphans in Africa or orphans in uh, Bangladesh or orphans in Syria now, yeah, they will give. If it happened that no one approached them, they will not do it. Because, again, they did not prepare for it. They did not have a target to do it. Lakin, if you have a target that, oh, okay, now what is my budget? What is my monthly income, net income? Okay, let us say my monthly income, uh, 1,500 pounds. Okay, let me give 10% of this as a sadaqah. Sadaqah, as the Prophet ﷺ said, it will never decrease the wealth. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I am and the sponsor of the orphan, yeah, will be like this in Jannah. 
together. So let me see how many orphans I can sponsor. Let me do some work. Yeah, I found Umma Welfare or uh, uh, any other organization, trustworthy organization, how much they charge to orphan, uh, to, to uh, sub, uh, sponsor an orphan, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. Let me just sponsor at least one, two, three. Okay, and do it. Plan for it and do it. Uh, in, in London, you will see always in the masjid people are uh, asking for donation for madrasas in uh, India, in Bangladesh, in uh, some, sometimes some African countries. Put a target for yourself. In the month of Ramadan, I have a budget of 300 pounds. Maybe more than that. If I am a businessman, more than that. Maybe I can set 1,000 pounds. Maybe I can send, set 10,000 pounds. And I can allocate it aside in order to give it as a sadaqa. And when the month of Ramadan comes, I don't struggle. I don't know where to give it. This, this, this. Uh, I'm not quite sure. The whole month will pass. And still you are looking for a place to give your sadaqa. Is it clear? Again, this is part of the planning. Then, i'tikaf. As we said, i'tikaf is one of the most virtuous activities to be done during the month of Ramadan. The Prophet وسلم, according to Hadith Aisha and many other hadith, used to do i'tikaf 10 days every month of Ramadan. And in, um, in that year where he could not do i'tikaf for 10 days he made them up okay uh, ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said that there is no act that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam voluntarily act except the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left it at once except for what i'tikaf the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never left it since he started doing it and the scholar said as well, because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not specify a specific reward for the i'tikaf, it means that its reward is unimaginable. Yes? Okay? I'tikaf. So, uh, why not to do i'tikaf? The last 10 days of Ramadan, where, where how, some masajid, uh, I prayed yesterday in East London Mosque, in order to do i'tikaf, you have to apply from now, which means that you have the plan to do i'tikaf from now. I remember last year a brother came to me in the middle of Ramadan. Yeah, I was not in fact here. He rang me. He was ringing, ringing, and he said, do you have any connection with East London Mosque? I said, why? He wants to do i'tikaf and is already fully booked. I said, it's not, not a matter of co connection. Why didn't you plan before? He said, well, I, I did not plan. And I, it was not, I didn't think that they uh, become fully booked early, uh, early. So this is part of the plan. Check, will you do i'tikaf this year? If you can't do it this year, why not next year? So this is again part of the plan. Part of the plan, my dear brothers and sisters is, because this is one of the most virtuous activities. Again, Qiyamul Layl, believe me, what happens is the first night I go to this masjid, the first night of Ramadan, I'll go to this masjid. I like it, maybe, no, not like it. I, the second night I'll go to the other masjid. Oh, he resides very quickly. Tayyip. The third night I go, oh no, the environment there, many children, they just shout. Is not khushur. Yeah? I'll spend the whole month of Ramadan just moving around. Okay? I did not establish proper Qiyamul Layl. Why? Because mentally, psychologically, even in terms of information, who is praying, what, okay, who will lead the salah, where, facilities, etc. I also was not ready for that. So this is again Qiyamul Layl. And uh, the last thing 
that should be done frequently during the month of Ramadan is dua. As we said in the previous lecture, we said Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned dua in the middle of what? Of the verses that talk about what? Fasting. Yeah? Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned first of all what fasting? Ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu kutubi alaykum musiyamu kama kutubi ala ladhin min qablikum. Then Allah Jalla wa Ala says shahru ramadan aladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Then Allah Jalla wa Ala says what? وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ If my slaves ask you about me, tell them that I am very close to them. Answer their calls. So they should call me, they should invoke me, they should make dua for me. They should listen to what I'm saying, they should make dua for me yeah so they might be guided and you know the prophet sallallahu said man lam yas'alillaha yaghdab alayh the one who does not ask allah jalla wa ala allah jalla wa ala will become angry with him allah will become angry with him so we should do, do a lot of dua and during fasting in particular uh, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam said Three people, their dua will be accepted. The musafir, the father, and the fasting person. Okay? And in the other hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, for every fasting person, there is a dua that is not rejected. وَذَلِكَ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ And that is when he breaks the fast. Just few minutes before he breaks the fast. So that is a time for dua. Believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, yeah, believe me, that many of us, many of us don't know what kind of dua they can make. Do you agree or not? Maybe you know, believe me, others don't know. You know those people who do tawaf, yeah, tawaf, and they carry the books, and they read from the books. One time I saw, I saw a brother, yeah, he's, yani, looks, mashallah, educated. I told him, yakhi, why don't you do dua, yani, just by yourself? This is not from sunnah, just you read. He said, I don't know, seven rounds, dua, which dua I'll do seven rounds? Too much. He doesn't know what kind of, he, so I said, what do you mean? He said, seven rounds, this is a long time. I need dua to make seven. I don't know what, what dua. I said, Subhanallah, this is ajeeb, ya khi. What? Ask Allah Jalla wa ala anything. Anything. He said, just anything. I said, ya khi. Okay. First of all, you can easily think of it. You are an educated person. Okay. Ask Allah Jalla wa ala things for akhirah and things for dunya. Okay. Now, things for dunya, you can classify them. Things related to yourself, things related to your wife, things that are related to your children, things that are related to your parents, yeah? Then, things related to your health, things related to the health of your children, things and so on. Then, things related to your financial situation, things related to the financial situation of the family. Also, the social life. I want to rectify my problems with my parents the problems with my family. I want the problem to rectify the problems with my children. And so on. If you can think about it, Wallahi, you will not, you need more time to do more dua. This is what? This is just dua in matters related to what? Dunya. What about the most important dua, which is what? Dua for the akhirah which is the most important dua. Ya akhi, every single one of us is in need of what? Dua that Allah Jalla wa Ala to keep him firm. Wajinubni wa baniya an na'bud al-asnam. This is the dua of what? Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam used to say, Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh, the one who turns the hearts, make my heart firm on your deen. Yeah, so the prophets were making dua like this. 
and let alone the hundreds of dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam taught us, even if you can't say them, don't worry about them, but think of what you need and just make dua. So if you are not ready with certain types of dua, my dear respected brothers and sisters, wallahi the whole day will pass, the time to break your fast will pass without making dua. One time, a group of uh, people uh, asked Anas ibn Malik, the servant of the Prophet Wasallam, said to them, come, we uh, make dua for us. Then Anas ibn Malik went and he said, Allahumma innaka anta salam wa minka salam. Uh, sorry, he said, Rabbana, sorry. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab anna. They said, Anas ibn Malik, give us more. He said, what? This is not a sufficient for dua for you? He said, this is a dua that I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say it frequently. Oh Allah, give us hasana in this dunya. Oh Allah, give us hasana in the akhirah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. And oh Allah, protect us from the punishment of the fire of hell. Okay? In the other hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say a lot of dua. اللهم عني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك. Uh, ابن القيم رحمه الله تعالى said this is one of the most powerful dua. Oh Allah help me yeah, to, make, to make ذكر of you. عني على ذكرك and to thank you to be grateful to you. وعلى شكرك اللهم عني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك and to perfect your to perfect the ibadah. And you can, okay, learn many of the uh, du'a, there are many du'a books that uh, you have. Uh, anyway, to conclude, yes, uh, uh, from now, my dear brothers and sisters, you need to set targets for yourself. And I advise you just to go every single one of you to put these targets in writing in the beginning because some people can't put things they, 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 they can't manage themselves so if you put things in writing I want to achieve this 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 during the month of Ramadan and okay I, I know some people have reservation on this they say no this is not part of the Sunnah if you do it for yourself and you keep it for yourself yeah, or if, you, if you, you share it just with one or two people, that's not a problem, inshallah. Okay, to help you to be activated, okay, to be encouraged to do uh, a lot of dua. Um, uh, one brother I remember asked me, he said, who said that this is yani, setting targets, yani, is, is something from the sunnah? I said, I didn't say that it is from the Sunnah, but it doesn't contradict the Sunnah. In fact, if you look at the Sunnah, you will see that Sunnah is indirectly encouraging this. Because if you look at the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, you see, مثلاً, uh, that the Prophet وسلم, normally puts figures. Yeah? مثلاً, hadith of Muhabiba, Man salla lillahi ثنتي عشرة ركعة في اليوم بنى الله له بيتا في الجنة the one who prays 12 ركعة Allah will in a daily basis Allah will build uh, for him what a house in Jannah so now what this is a target to pray what 12 ركعة you will get this مثلا من قال لا إله إلا الله وحده ولا شريك له ولا الملك له والحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير after what مغرب after فجر and after مغرب no one will come on the day of resurrection with a better deed than him except a person who did like him and more so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم what gave a target uh, in the other hadith, man qala, the one who says, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi mi'ata marra. Yes, hina ma yusbih, 
وحينما يمسي in the morning 100 times and in the evening 100 times no one will be better than him on the day of resurrection except a person who used to say the same or more are you following yeah so as if the prophet sallallahu giving us a small targets so you can say it 100 200 300 1000 times abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to have a string and he used to make tasbih 14000 times on a daily basis yeah uh, one of the salaf when he died they found his fingers moving uh, subconsciously uh, because they uh, as if the muscles got used to it the tasbih yeah thabit al banani he said this life is nothing but dhikr of allah yeah and this is the meaning of the hadith of the prophet sallallahu that the dunya mal'unu mal'unu ma fiha illa dhikrullah wa ma wala anyway i think the idea is clear inshallah so i ask all of you my dear respected brothers and sisters to go and put targets for yourselves based on the main activities that should be carried out during the month of ramadan fasting Qiraat al-Qur'an, recitation of Qur'an and learning Qur'an. Okay. Uh, then i'tikaf. Then sadaqah. Dua and uh, prayer night. Qiyamul layl. Jazakumullahu khaira. Barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Wa baraka ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa alayhi wa sahabihi